Okay, hi everybody. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all see me? How is everyone doing tonight? All right, we are trying something very new. Everyone keep their fingers crossed. I am trying to use technology. <laughs> I have cameras and they are hooked up to my computer and I have one behind me there. I don't know if I'm leaning the right way, um, but, and I have another camera. So fingers crossed that this goes well tonight and that it's all seamless. We will see. I'm not a very good camera person. I'm going to put that disclaimer out there right now. <laughs> so y'all be a little patient with me. Oh, hi, everybody. So quick introduction. Hi, my name is Carly Bell, and I love to do machine embroidery tutorials, and we like to get together every other Friday night for a little something we call Sip and Stitch. And I am more prepared tonight than I was a few weeks ago, and I actually have a beverage. <laughs> So thanks everyone for joining in tonight. I see all of your lovely names in the live chat on the side. Thank you first off to our moderators, Miss Carol and Brenda and Khan. So thank you ladies for helping me out. Amber says she hates technology. I do too, Amber. <laughs> I will let you know. If this goes well tonight, Amber, I will tell you all about it so you can use it for your live videos. But fingers crossed this is going to work. I had this kind of set up a couple weeks ago, and I was trying to use my cameras instead of my phone. Because, y'all, I'm usually using my phone. And let me turn it off now that we're thinking about that. Well, I guess it doesn't matter now. But um, I'm usually using my phone, and my phone and YouTube my YouTube doesn't like my phone. I don't know. It automatically shuts off my lives sometimes. <laughs> so that's why we have real cameras and we have lots of cords going on around here now. <laughs> so I actually told Elise maybe she should stay out of the room tonight because I have cords going everywhere and I'm scared she's going to trip on them. <laughs> so, oh, let's, so yeah, so a couple things I want to talk to y'all about. Um, thank you to everyone who watched yesterday's Sewing Machines Plus Live with Blaine Austin. Um, I was so excited to see a lot of familiar names in the chat box for that live yesterday. And I was really excited that a lot of y'all won things for the giveaways. So congrats to everyone who won yesterday. That was very, very exciting uh, to see lots of familiar names pulled up as the winners. So. Let's see. All right. Yes, the squad did clean up, Carol. Yes, they did. <laughs> okay. What else I had to tell y'all? So, um, so let's talk about what we're what we're gonna do tonight. So, uh, uh, exciting things. I am gonna try and multitask. We will see how good of a job I do, <laughs> and how long this video will be because of that. <laughs> But I tried to set up as much as I could ahead of time so that we could jump in and get started. Um, however, if you do have any questions about um, any parts of the setup, you know, please feel free to ask. I will try and answer any and all of your questions. So we're going to do a double, double header, two for one tonight. So maybe two bad for this. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> um, but first... We are going to set up a shirt, um, and we're going to do um, a request. This is a special request um, the last for the last sip and stitch. People were asking about smocking and faux smocking embroidery designs. Um, now, actual em embroidering smocking is something I still need to research. Um, I was doing a little bit of research on it, and and that might be something for the future. But in the meantime, there are. Um, faux smocking designs that you can purchase online and put on a regular shirt and they're super duper cute and one of my favorite designers Marma B, Marmy B um, has some adorable designs and she had a cute Easter one that I picked to use for tonight and I contacted her before um, 
a couple weeks ago, and I told her that we were doing this tonight, and she so kindly offered a discount code for all of you. Um, and it is in the description box below. Um, so check that out. I don't know when it expires exactly, so hopefully um, anyone who catches the video, the rewatch over the weekend can still use the code, but um, just try it and see if it works. But it's for 25% off your order. So doo -doo. FYI, no need to fix, but I have fuzzy sound. Oh no, okay. Let's see. I'm using, this is technology. I am... Maybe if I turn this down a little bit, does that sound better? How does that sound? Get a hissing sound. Okay. Let's see. My computer is freaking out a little because I think I have so many programs open. Um, so you know the fan on the computer? It's it's going. It's constant. It's and it's not uh it's not stopping. <laughs> Sounds like the ocean. Okay, let's see. Maybe if I use my microphone. Only thing is that I have a very short microphone. So, it will work while I have it plugged in. And I'm sitting by the computer, but I don't know how well you can hear me um, when I step away from the computer. So is the microphone, I have to be like this for you to hear me? Volume up. Okay, let's see. All right, how about now? Too low. Not bad. Okay, so the microphone's not helping. Yeah, I think the hissing is the fan, Wendy. Hi, Brenda. Everyone send some virtual hugs to Brenda tonight. She needs them. Okay, better? Good? Okay. All right, so hopefully using this microphone is better. I need to get one of those clip-on microphones, and I'm going to need a long cord for that, too. <laughs> okay, so hopefully, yes, after a few sips, nobody's going to hear that anyway. Okay, so hopefully this little microphone will help things to be better. All right, so... Moving on, Carol, thank you. Um, yes, everybody send some hugs to Brenda. Yay, we love you, Brenda. Okay, so I told you about the post mapping sign. I told you about the discount code. Other exciting news is that I um, got in touch with Mighty Hoops and I, were, I was asking them questions about their special magnetic hoops and the brackets for them because y'all know I have two free arm machines. I have my brother Persona back there which is a single needle and then I have my Recoma EM1010 uh, which is a multi-needle and both of those can use Mighty Hoops but they use different brackets. So we'll be using the Recoma tonight and so I told them um, you know what I was looking for and they sent me a really nice set of two Mighty Hoops, and a special uh, adjustable fixture, it's called a freestyle fixture, um, that helps you to hoop items using the Mighty Hoop. So we'll be using that tonight, and there are links for those things down below. So thank you to Mighty Hoops for sending me those things. I'm super excited to use them tonight. Okay, what is next? You see the bunnies? There's the bunnies. I'm on the wrong shoulder all the time. Okay, so once we set up the shirt with the Mighty Hoop on the Recoma and set it and go because this is a full thread only design. There's no applique. So this is the beauty of a multi-needle and that we can set that shirt on there. It knows when to switch the threads to different colors and we can move on and do something else. So hence the double header tonight. And the second portion of the show will be to you to embroider these super cute bunnies back here. And we'll be doing that using a machine that I just received this week. And if you saw Sewing Machines Plus live show yesterday, you saw it. It is the Brother NQ3600D. And it is a beautiful machine. It is definitely, this is a step up from the normal intro machine of a PE800. 
Y'all know I've been having a PE770 for a long time now. <laughs> um, this machine is also, this is a combo sewing and embroidery machine. However, it's just the embroidery por portion of the machine. Excuse me, keep burping. <laughs> um, just the embroidery person, uh, portion of the machine is equivalent to the Brother NQ1600E, which is super popular um, and, however, very hard to find. And if you are a Baby Lock um, fan, it's also equivalent to the Baby Lock Flourish 2. So the NQ1600, the Flourish 2, all the embroidery features are the same as my 3600D. However, it is also a sewing machine and it has some really fancy sewing um, options on the machine that I haven't played with yet that I hope to soon. So if you want a little sneak peek of there, I did rearrange some things in my room. Um, I have a bit of a delay so I can't see if y'all see. <laughs> but this is the machine and that's what we'll be using tonight. Um, and I rearranged my machines for, for the show tonight so that I have this in my normal spot of where my PE770 was. So uh, with the bunny ears tonight, I'm going to show you how I do them, and that is ripping the seam of the ear, embroidering them, and then we're going to sew them back up so you don't see the back side of the ear. So um, that is the goal of tonight. I think I told you everything I wanted to tell you, so we might go ahead and get started. <laughs> um, okay. Yes, Brenda has had this machine for a long time, and she loves it. It's really, really a nice machine. So um, now the 3600D Sewing Machines Plus does have a lot of them in stock right now. And when you get them, they will also give you a, um, a thread kit. And so this is the frozen um, thread kit that came with it. And then yesterday on the show, he mentioned that he was going to give another accessory away with it. I'm not sure if you had to order it during the show to get that accessory or if it's going to be, you know, the first so many buyers. So we'll see um, about that. But I have my affiliate link um, down below in the description box for this machine if you're interested in buying it. And I don't know for sure. I didn't try it myself, but you can try the coupon code HELLO and see if it will take 10% off of your order. So try that out um, if you are looking to buy this machine. And if you do, send me a message. Let me know you got it. All right. So let's get stitching. Yes. So the NQ3600D has the maximum embroidery feel of a 6x10. And it comes with the 6x10 hoop and the 5x7 hoop. So it comes with both of them. Um, and then you can get a 4x4 hoop and a 2x3 hoop. And they also make a 6x6 hoop, which is really cool um, for this machine. So, doo -doo -doo. yes, the Flourish 2 comes with both of those hoops as well. The NQ1600, however, only comes with the 6x10 hoop when you order it. So you'll need to get more hoops for that. All right, so, and then we'll be using the Recoma first tonight. Um, awesome machine. If you are interested or in the market for a Recoma, I have my referral link down below. And all you do is you click that link and it will take you to the Recoma website and ask you to put your name and your um, email and your phone number. And somebody from Recoma will call you and tell you all about the machine and um, the financing and all the different packages that they have. So, and if you use my link to do that, it will save you $100 off your order. So please use that if you are interested in that machine. Okay. All right, Clifton says, um, yes, you can hand sew the ears back together. You can try and rip as little as possible. What I do is I sew around with my sewing machine, and then I hand stitch the little hole at the end. Uh, the machine coupon code is HELLO. So this is Sewing Machines Plus, so I'm going to do SMP. Coupon code is HELLO. I'm going to put that in the chat box right now. Oh, tea scrap. Tina, thank you. I'm glad you got in Brilliance Essentials. 
Um, bon Bon wants to know how long I've had my Ricoma. I've had it since December. So what, going on three months now? Yeah, over three months. Yay, the coupon does work for the 3600 Laura says. So use that. Save you a little bit of money. And there's free shipping. And if you live outside of California, there's no tax. So, like, that's your final price. I love that about Sewing Machines Plus. Like, that that's the price. There's no add-ons. And then usually they're giving you things for free to go with it. I did see that the Flourish 2 was in stock today as well. If you don't need a sewing and embroidery combo machine, the Flourish, the Baby Lock Flourish 2 is in stock. And I think he has some free little things to go with it, too. So, let me show, let me give you my link to the Flourish too, in case you don't need a sewing machine. Okay, let me put that in the chat. Okay, so that's the link to the Flourish too. Yes, I know people love their Flourish too and their 1600s. They're great machines, so I'm super excited to play with this one more because I actually, I wanted a 1600 for since last year, and I never did get my hands on one, and that's why I ended up buying the Persona. <laughs> okay, so let's try something out. We are going to switch cameras. Let's see. Camera, switch, and we're going to go over to the Vacoma, and let's see if I can carry all of my stuff with me. Sorry if the microphone makes noise. Okay. So, I'm not a good camera person. <laughs> We're going to see how this goes. All right. So, I'm going to move the bunnies out the way now. But these are the bunnies um, I got from Walmart. What do you need? I need you to tell me I just want me. them to, t I want to tell them to subscribe to a channel. Okay, okay she'll be back. Alright, so these are the bunnies that we're going to do. So, I'm going to take all these off my table um, so that I have a little bit more room. Throw them down there. But, of course, I had to buy one of every color because <laughs> I could not help myself. Alright. So... Okay. okay, Abigail wants to come tell y'all something, because she's going to knock everything over in the process. Okay. okay, there you go. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and check out our TikTok account, Kylie <laughs> Thonstaff, no. with all the TikToks I made. <laughs> no, nobody's looking at TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, she, look at TikTok. No. <laughs> they do have people that have embroidery TikToks. They have a few ladies in, in the Facebook group that have awesome embroidery TikToks. I, I'm not one of those people. The only thing that are on my TikToks are things that Abigail makes. <laughs> all right, I need you to be yeah. super careful of all the cords in the room tonight. Please, thank you. I want to say hi again. Okay, one more time. Hi! <laughs> all right, let's get started. So well, at least we don't actually see the huh. Hey, I need you. It's on camera, right? Yeah, it's on camera. So everyone can see us. Everyone saw Most it. Posting live. Yes, it's live. See? Just saw it. Okay. Watch the cords, please. Why did I say that? <laughs> She's crazy. Okay. So, what are we doing first? <laughs> I am showing you the design. So first, I printed it out in Brilliant. So this is the faux. Can you close the door for me, sweetie? Ooh, that's Pretty. I'll make, I'm going to make you one, too. Close the door, please. Oh, 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 oh. Um, I called it some... Oh, the bunnies? Okay. Um, this is the faux Easter... I called them on this one. Okay. Thank you. Close the door. Guys, guess what? This is going to be my bunny. Okay. We're not talking about the bunny Her right Her name's now. Fluffykins. We're talking about this shirt. <laughs> Um, so this no, is the design, nice and then, design to put on the bunny, huh? and we're putting, using, oh, the bunny. close the door, please, close the door, please, okay. bye, bye. tell daddy to come see. Hello. Oh, Lisa, I already said to subscribe, hit that notification. Oh. Lisa, Lisa. Okay. 
this. Aww. Okay, remember mommy told you that I have a lot of cords in the room tonight? Oh, oh Tom and Jerry's going on. Watch the cords. Okay, go, go, go. Phew, okay, sorry about that. <laughs> my goodness, my kids are crazy. Y'all know my kids are crazy. Um, so, the font is a scallop font from Joy Cake Designs, and that is linked down below. And on the, on, when you print out the design on, in Brilliance, or whatever software that you're using, um, it will tell you what each step is, and what color you have it as on the, on the sheet. So I went ahead, this is super important with the multi-needle machine, because you have to program the machine and tell it which needle or which color to use for each step. So I've done all of that already. And I actually, I did a test stitch of it before tonight's video. So that, because I never used Mighty Hoop, so I was like, I should probably do a test stitch to make sure I set this up right. So here is the test stitch of the design using the Mighty Hoop. And I just did it on some scrap fabric. And after doing it, I realized, okay, if I'm gonna do this on a white shirt, I probably should make the bunny gray. So I think I'm gonna change the bunny color to like a silver gray. And then I did Elise's name with a dark pink outline in yellow. I think I'm gonna switch it to a light pink. So those are a couple things I'm gonna switch on the machine before we start. But this is the Mighty Hoop. So let's go ahead and go to the fixture. You can see it there. And let me move my microphone. <laughs> I hope y'all can still hear me okay. Um, and then let me get my iPad because I can't see your comments. Let's see if I can make this work. I could turn this. All right, so I think I have this working now. Okay, sorry, I'll see all my stuff on the table. Ah, no. Okay, first mess up. Camera came unplugged from the from the thing. Let's see. All right, give me a second, guys. Give me one second. Let me switch you. Okay, give me one second, guys. I where'd my mic go? I told y'all tonight's gonna be hit or miss. <laughs> Not only am I trying to do two things at once, but I'm trying to use technology, and I'm not very good at technology. Okay, let's hook the camera back up. Let's see if this works. Where'd it go? Alright. Okay, now we have a camera again. Now I can transition. Okay. How's that working? Yes, I am multitasking. <laughs> okay. Thank y'all for being so understanding. I already have, uh, I have too many cords and I knew when Elise would come in here, <laughs> she's going to knock the camera down and pull all the cords out. I knew that was going to happen. Okay, so now I can push that here. Okay, so here is the hoop. Also, magnetic hoops. Keep away from electronics. And if you have a pacemaker, don't even get it. Um, so I'm going to try and be good about not putting these close to my electronics that I have all over my table. So, and they're very, very strong. Um, 
they have a tab on the underneath that I can pull, but like you have to be careful because it you will pinch yourself if you don't pull it away. And I'm sure that because I, I watch people use these and they're like, like they knock it off no problem, but I'm scared I'm going to pinch myself. I'm just not used to them yet. So that's my my test, and then this is the hoop. These are the two pieces of the hoop. So I'm going to put the big piece over here for now. Okay, and then this is the shirt we're doing tonight. And we're also going to try something new because I think with this, and because of the size of the shirt and the size of the hoop, I really don't have to figure out placement because it kind of fits snug right into it. So we're going to we're going to wing this without drawing my placement lines like I always do. And we're going to see how it comes out. Okay, so this is the freestyle adjustable fixture. And the way that it works is this, this piece here has two little thumb screws on the bottom. And it can slide up and down no matter what size hoop you're putting on. So if I had the 5x5 five five hoop, I can slide it down to fit this. So this is the other hoop size that I got, 5x5, five five, and then this is 8x9. So you take the, the bottom portion, and once it fits where you want, then you screw these tight. Okay, so now that is there, and it's not going anywhere. Um, now I'm not thinking about a stabilizer. So what we are going to do is... What I'm going to do tonight is put a piece of tear away here and then we're going to iron some poly mesh on the inside of the shirt. I think that's the method I'm going to take. I'm going to get some scissors. Okay. How is everybody hearing me with this microphone set up I'm trying to do? <laughs> Everybody still hear me okay? Okay, so that's my tear away. So I'm going to lay that here. Fine. Okay, good. I see Wolf Geist is here. Wolf Geist was one that won something on the sewing machine plus show yesterday. So that was exciting. Okay. So I'm going to switch cameras now and I'll bring you over to the iron and we'll put some poly mesh on the back of here. Alright, so let's move that. Okay, so i move my paper, move my hoop. Move y'all. Okay. So I'm just taking the shirt and put my iron in and I have to remember to unplug my iron when I'm done with it because do y'all remember the last time I used my Ricoma and I had my iron plugged in, I tripped the breakers in my craft room. <laughs> so we don't want that to happen again. So I'm going to use my iron quickly and then I'm going to turn it off. Right? Right. Okay, let me get my poly mesh. Where's the poly mesh? I had a bigger roll of poly mesh somewhere, but I don't know where it is. Okay, but this is my, I think this is a nine inch roll. This is one from Sewing Machines Plus. So I'm just gonna cut a piece of that. That's about as wide as a shirt. And then I'll turn the shirt inside out. 
Okay. Um, I see Jennifer had a question. What's your question, Jennifer? Oh, there's something on the inside. Okay. I'm going to be using an AJ Blanks um, shirt tonight. And uh, these are from, if you like embroidery machine YouTube videos, Angela Jasmina is awesome. And she has her own Blanks company, which is AJ Blanks. And I have a referral link down below. If you use my link, I think once it like brings you to the site, there's a little pop-up box that says, um, enter your email here for a $5 off coupon. So if you use my link, you can get $5 off your next purchase. Uh, Jennifer asks, is there a magnetic hoop for the 3600D? Yes, it is going to be, let's see, if we think about Brenda. So I know Brenda has two magnetic hoops for her machine. She has one like this. That is a five by seven hoop. And it's going to, mine is made for the PE800. Hers is going to slide in and fit the machine nicely. So this is the magnetic hoop um, you can get for the PE800. Or you could get one specific for the, if it says NQ1600, it will also work with the 3600. So that's 5 by 7 However, for 6 by 10 the only magnetic hoop option we can find was the dime magnetic hoop. Um, they have those on Sewing Machines Plus website. I don't know if they're in stock, though. Um, Brenda's experience is she doesn't you know the dime hoop is made more like the Mighty Hoop, where it's two full magnet pieces. Um, but I think it's much easier to pinch your fingers on those. I think Brenda's prefers these, where you have the, the, the separate little magnets. Um, but you can buy these magnets and use the base of the dime hoop if you prefer this system versus two magnet pieces together. So that's something to think about. I have a whole post on magnetic hoops in what was formerly known as the unit section and now is known as the guide section of the Facebook group. So I have a whole spot in there for you to check that out. Okay, so it shifts in the big hoop, she says. Okay. All right, so my poly mesh, I'll make sure I got my shiny side down. That's the adhesive side. And I'm going to use, I'm using my little iron. I love my little iron. I don't even turn on my big iron anymore. But I do, with because it's little, I find I have to add a lot of pressure. I'm really pushing down. And because I know my design is only in one spot, I really just need to get it good right here. I didn't have to make my thing so big. But because this is an all-thread design, the fusible stabilizer really helps keep the shirt from shifting while it's stitching. Because, you know, knit fabric is stretchy. Um, and it helps keep that. Okay. Unplug my iron. There we go. Okay, let's switch cameras now and go back to the... Base. So now I have my poly mesh. I'm going to turn my shirt right side up. And now it is ready to. Oh, a way that you can keep the tear away stabilizer from shifting is they have these little pieces here. And we can do this. Oh, I didn't make. There we go. You have to make the stabilizer big enough. So you could do that. And it's going to keep this stabilizer from moving. And if you did a cutaway, you know, do the same thing. Let's see. It's kind of bunched up on the sides here, so I'm just fixing it. And I did cut away, didn't it didn't, um, the stabilizer didn't move at all because the tear was a little more, uh, flimsy. Okay, and because the hoop is pretty much the width of the shirt, um, it really, 
there's really like no placement that needs to be done. Like I can see like it's right in the center. And I'm pulling it down where the collar is right where the top of the hoop is. Now we're going to take this part of the hoop and the way I have it is the tab is the bottom of the hoop of the, of the back portion. The warning sign is the top of the hoop for the, the, the front part of the hoop. So all we do is this and it sticks to it. And then I can squeeze this and this comes right off and then we slide it out and if you do find it's a little bit bumpy you can pull a little bit and smooth it out. I might even do better next time using my, because I do have fusible tearaway, I might do better just putting both the poly mesh and the tearaway on the shirt. But that's it, now it's nice and taut at the drum. So now let's go over to the machine. Let's see. Okay. So we have the shirt hooped, but the warning sign is where it's actually going to slide into the machine that way. So we're going to slide the bottom of the shirt through the free arm. And it is going to, because it's a magnet, it is going to have times where it's going to be pulled towards this needle bar or pulled towards the free arm. It's okay. You know, you just kind of push it through and it's, it's not like a hard stick like the top and the bottom of the hoop is. So, once you do that, just make sure that your shirt is not caught up in the arm of the machine. And so, with the Recoma, I had the design already loaded, and I did pick my colors already, but I'm going to change them. So, let me look at my paper. So, I said I wanted to change the white bunny. I think I'm going to do the white bunny in, let's see, let's, that was step number nine. So, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm gonna change that to gray. And then I think I'm gonna do all the spots that were dark pink, I'm gonna do the light pink. I think the dark pink was just too too much different from the design, like it did it didn't look right. So everything that's a three, I'm gonna change to a one, because the light pink is the first red. So three, one, two, one. And there is a way that I can select to where all the threes would automatically be turned to a color if you do this again in the future and you want to change it up. I just can't remember right now. <laughs> so that is all my colors, all in the, the right order. So I'm going to hit OK. Um, now, I did that test stitch, but I kind of did it um, in the middle of the hoop. However, I'm going to want the design to be, you know, about... On toddler shirts, I like to go about an inch and a half from the collar, and my collar is way up here. So I really want the top of my design to be here. So I am going to move my design higher. And what I can do is a trace so that I can see right where it's going to go. So in order for me to trace, I kind of have, have to go into embroidered mode. And I'm going to hit trace here. And it's going to trace with the first needle. It's getting close. It's not close to the hoop, but it's close to my finger. So I think I'm going to go down a little bit. No longer. Okay, let's trace again. Hold it down the number one needle. Yeah, that looks nice. Now 
might even be a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to down a little bit more. I don't want it to be too close to the pile. But, okay, so that is the design. And let me double check. I think it's in the center. I wasn't paying attention to the left and right. I was paying attention to the front. Okay, so that's there. Yeah. That, it does look like it's nice and centered in the hoop. So there's an, the same amount of space on both sides. All right, so I think we are ready to stitch. Um, and I, I did rotate the design so that it's upside down because we loaded the shirt kind of upside down. And let's get started. So the first stitch is the white faux smock. And I did, I when I did my test stitch, let's see. I don't know if y'all could hear me. Okay. When I did my test stitch, I set a stopwatch on my phone to see how long it would take. And I totally forgot to stop my stopwatch <laughs> to see how long the design took. Because, and the machine may tell me, I just, I need, that's a question I need to ask support. The machine tells me how many stitches, but it doesn't, I don't see an obvious estimated time. Uh-oh, something happened. Hold on. Some of my thread from some of the black thread was hanging too low and got caught up while the white thread was stitching. No problem. Sometimes the threads don't get pulled back. They have like this Velcro bar that pulls it back after it cuts it. And sometimes they don't get stuck in there good when they hang. Like this, ooh, this pink one is stuck. Okay, that was good. So, whenever something doesn't look right, just press that pause button. Now it's doing the smocking. Sorry if you couldn't hear me while I was turned around. I know this whole mic thing is going to be a problem. Okie dokie. So I did unplug my iron. Thank you, Karen. Okay. Let's see. I saw someone saying, yes, I have, I hold the needle down the trace. You can see where the needle is going, but I feel like I have a much more precise location when I hold down the, um, the presser foot of the needle to know exactly where it's going to go. With the bigger Vercoma machines, the 15 needle, you can get the laser option, but for some reason they don't have it for the 10 needle machine. The laser pointer is nice so that you know exactly where the needle is going to hit to make sure that it's not going to hit the hoop. Whenever you're working with a mighty hoop, or the um, these are the fast frames, the eight and one device for the Vercoma. Um, it's not the same as telling the machine, okay, I have the five by seven hoop that knows exactly where it is. With these, it doesn't know exactly what hoop, what frame you have in. So you have it's very important to trace so that you know that the needle is not going to hit the frame. Same with the mighty hoop. And that's also very important with the persona. It does not know what frame you have in. And if I use a mighty hoop, it doesn't know that either. So it's very, very important to trace. Okay. So we have that stitching. And so now we can start talking about the bunnies. All right. So let's switch cameras. All right. I almost got this technology thing. You know, we'll see. <laughs> so, um, this is the bunny we'll be doing tonight. Um, Elise specifically picked this bunny to give to her best friend for Easter. Um, and her favorite color is green, so she needed the mint green bunny. And um, her name is Aubrey. And we're going to stitch that on. And I picked a pink color already, and I already have it loaded on the 3600 um, so that it's ready to go. So the first step we're going to do. So I've seen several people just float these on tear away or wash away 
and stitch. You can do that, but you will see the embroidered, the white bobbin thread on the back. Now, one option would be is I can get my mint green embroidery thread and wind a bobbin and stitch it um, with the, the mint green embroidery thread working as my bobbin thread. I think that will work. I haven't tried it myself, but I think you could definitely try that if you don't want to take it apart. However, it does look a lot more polished um, and clean looking if you rip the, the seam. And I know I was super nervous about doing this at first um, because one, I am not a seamstress. Sewing is not my, my specialty at all, but it's not that hard. If I could do it, you could do it. So let me push that back a little bit. Um, so what we want to do essentially is rip the seam from about here down so that we can just take that flap and float it on some stabilizer. So you don't need to rip the whole thing. So I'm going to start here and all I'm doing is I'm spreading the seam between the fuzz and the inner ear and just kind of poke it in there and just go like that, and you'll see the thread. You see the white thread. So now look, it's already started to pull apart. And you just kind of rip as you go. You can see the thread and just pull it. So it's super easy. It's looking good behind me. So we are just doing this. And just rip until you feel comfortable with, there we go, like that. So you can see that this is ripped. You can see it's open. So now the back of the threading will be here and we're gonna sew this back up and you won't see it, okay? So that's it, super easy. All right, so I have my five by seven hoop already. Um, I have cut away in here. I have put some cutaway in here yesterday in case I needed to do a demonstration for the Sewing Machines Plus. Um, and, but cutaway is fine because um, I can still trim it and it be on the inside of the ear. Um, you can also use tearaway. But I'm just going to have this already on here so I'm just using it. So I am, let's see. the grid for the, the hoop. This is a brand new hoop. It's all clean and shiny. I'm about to make it sticky. <laughs> so here we go. I put my little dot. I got my erasable fabric marker. Y'all know I love. I probably, to be honest, you don't even really need to do this. It's the bunny ear you need to do. I'm just going to do a line here is what I'm going to do because I did my name. Yeah, I still need this. But the bunny ear is what's important. And I probably, I should have printed it out. Print yours out just to be safe. I measured mine. So, like, I took the flap of the ear. And I can tell y'all, let me go down brilliance. I use, so tonight we're using the Twinkle Star font from Creative Applique. I have that link down below. I used, it's thinking. I think I used the 1.25 inch tall letters. Yes, 1.25 inch. And I made it to where the name is five inches wide. And so it is going to stitch this way in the hoop. And it's, you know, when you take the ruler and you measure 
this flap five inches fits very nicely in the ear. So it depends on the length of the name. If you have a really short name, you might be able to go a little bit taller with the letters. Um, but I just did an inch and a quarter. You can probably go up to two inches, um, depending on if you have a short name. So now I've got the flap out here. Okay. I'm always nervous. <laughs> Keep checking that the shirt. With the free arm machine, the shirt doesn't usually come up. But I still, it's, it's just a habit. I'm always nervous. Okay. I'm going to take the grid and place it here. I should just use a ruler. Let's see. Let's go the, let's find the center point of the ear is about three inches tall. So 1.5 is the center and we got about six inches so three so i think that's good okay so that's my center point and i'm just going to use my ruler to use the center of the ear and try and draw some cross hairs that are somewhat straight just kind of eyeballing here i don't know if y'all can see Okay, sorry, I don't have the camera where y'all can see what I'm doing, but I drew some crosshairs on the ear. Um, so I have that here. So now we have that, we have this, and we're only doing one bunny tonight. But if you have a bunch of these to do, you can, depending on the size hoop you have, you can definitely line up two of them in a 5x7 hoop. Or if you're using a 6x10 hoop, you could probably do... Um, three or maybe more. Okay. So that noise means I have a thread break. Oh, I wanted to change my bobbin before we started. I know that's what it is. My bobbin is empty. Empty, empty, empty. So, yeah, the beeping, and it says tea break. That means either a thread has broken or the bobbin thread is not right. And in my case, the bobbin thread is empty. Totally forgot that I wanted to change the bobbin before we started. So I got this one, no more good. And this is the bobbin case for the Recoma. And these are the magnetic free wound bobbins. So the bobbin goes to the back. And when you're looking at it, it looks like it's in the clockwise direction. So it's a little different if you're coming from a flatbed machine. And then you pull it through this little notch here around and then it has this cute little like curly cue on top and it wraps around that a couple times Oop. and then you leave about two inch tail and you're done okay but we should back up the design because it probably missed a few stitches so i can put that on the machine I'm going to back up about 20 stitches or so, and hit start. Okay, let's go. Alright, so we have everything ready. Now we just need to spray it and try and keep my new, sh my new hoops nice and clean and not make them look all dingy like my... PE770 hoops. <laughs> um, we got this trick from someone in the Facebook group posted it. This is a steering wheel cover from the Dollar Tree and you can wrap this around your hoop. Now it fits better on the PE800 hoops, the NQ hoops, the in Innibus hoops have this really big bar here. So they're a little harder to go around, but I'm kind of just going to go on top of it. Do something like this. So kind of hides all the gray plastic, but really this is the area that we need to spray. 
and I'm using temporary spray adhesive. Okay, but we are going to pin the bunny too. Hold it in place. Okay, so that's just to protect from getting sticky stuff all over your hoop. Down there. All right. And now, depending on, I think I did it this way, because think about this is where the, the hoop is sliding in. I want the bunny on the outside. So this is where I'm going to line up my placement marks. And we're going to trace this on the machine, too, to make sure that it's right where we want it to be. So, that is now there. Can you see that? Okay. And just for good measure, we're going to cover this with some water-soluble topper. Sorry, I'm on a roll. I'm going to sit and answer some questions in a minute. <laughs> Just trying to get it. Okay. So, um, oh, Lord, I'm sure Carol has a list now. I'm sorry I'm not looking at the computer. Okay. So that's some water-soluble topper, and I'm going to use some pins to pin that into place. And I think I like these bunnies better than the one. This is like the New Year bunnies. Last year, I'll show you the ones they had last year. Um, I wanted to get my girls, I made each of my girls one last year. They're in their bedroom. I forgot to pull them out so you can see what they look like done. But the inside of the ears look a lot just like thinner, softer material. I think it was more fuzzy for the ones last year. So I, I like these better. And I also like the sparkle. I love me some sparkle. All right. I need a better, I need like a real pin cushion. I got this magnet, but I need a pin cushion. Okay, so that is done. It is pinned and the bunny is here. So let me move this over there. going to move y'all back over there as well. So let me okay, let's switch cameras and then I'll sit and answer some questions. y'all can hear me okay. All of these cords. All right. And let's finish. Okay. So. Okay. I'm ready for questions. <laughs> Woo! All right. Okay, I hope y'all can still hear me good. Okay. Carly. Marie wants to know if you recommend a press cloth. Press, what do you mean press cloth? Tell me what that means. Chantel wants to know if you will cut um, the cutaway and the extra of the polymer. So are we talking about for the shirt? So for the shirt, I use the tear away and the polymer. So when we're done, we're going to tear away the tear away leather. Uh, portion and yes for the poly mesh we're going to cut it so because that design was a lot smaller than that big piece of poly mesh I put on there um, I was making it so it was as big as the, as the hoop but now that I think about it I did, since I was 
had the tear away as big as the hoop. I didn't need the poly mesh to be that big, so I'm probably going to save the rest of it. <laughs> um, so that's for the shirt. For the bunny, I'm using cutaway. You can also use tear away. But yes, for the cutaway, we're going to trim it before we sew it back on. Um, Rachel wants to know how long the code hello is good for. It, uh, is indefinitely. The code is good. Um, a cloth to use when pressing the poly mesh. No. I have put the iron. Just make sure that you have the adhesive side down onto the back of the shirt. And then no, you don't need a pressing cloth. You can put the iron directly on the poly mesh. Same with tear, usable tear away. The shiny adhesive side is down and you can put your iron right on top. Ooh, Tina says she uses sticky hoops from Dime. They're flat frames and you put sticky paper on the back of the hoop, they work great. So that sounds like um, the easy frames um, that I have from Derpy. Same thing, they're flat frames and I put sticky tear away underneath them. Uh, uh, Connie wants to know what does the name look like in Brilliance? I can show you real quick. So, let's see, screen share. Okay, this is what the name looks like in Embrilliance. This is the Twinkle Star um, font. And so I did it in the 5x7 hoop, and you can see it's going left to right. So when I typed it out, it was just a little bit wider than the hoop, and I kind of smushed it in. I also increased the compensation. So I have the name selected. If you go to Stitch, right here, Compensation, I moved that up two points. So that's something you can do with a satin stitch font. If you want to make it a tiny bit bolder, especially for something fuzzy like this, that's something that you can do. Uh, let's see. How do I get out of this? Okay. Oh, did y'all even see? <laughs> nope. I'm looking at the camera now. Y'all didn't even see what I was showing y'all. Okay, let me go back and do it again. Alright, so... How do I make it to where y'all can see it? Give me a second. Hmm. Give me one second. Let me figure this out. and brilliance now. Yeah, I think you can see it now. Okay, so this is the name in the 5x7 hoop and this is usually what it looks like when you select on it. You type your name and you pick your font, but right here is the stitch button. Can y'all see that? I don't know if you could see. But the stitch button and then the compensation is here. So I hope that helps. No, I still can't see it. I don't know how to make y'all see my screen good, sorry. Let's see. Okay. So what's next? Um, no, I'm not going to rotate it because I think I had it going, you know, left to right like you're looking at it. And let's see. No, we should rotate it. Thank you for pointing that out. So we, should, we, we want the name to be the A kind of upside down and going that way if we think about it, how it's going to hang on the, on the bunny. So, yes, we should rotate it. 
I was thinking I had it right to where I didn't need to rotate it. So thank you for making me think about it some more. <laughs> Okay. So, all right, any more questions? Are y'all ready to start stitching the bunny ear? We might have two things done at one time. Let's see. Oh, no, the bunny's almost done. I mean, the, um, the shirt's almost done. Okay. Yay, Mary's working on shirts. If you know what it is, it's time for a sip break. That is what it is. <laughs> Angela wants to know if I like the Chroma software that comes with your Chroma. Yes, I do. And I have been taking, um, one of the things I, lo I love about Chroma is it, all the training comes with it. And it's all free. And it, you can sign up for it. It's all virtual. Um, and they hold the classes to teach you how to use the machine, like multiple times per week. And so you could take it once and then try and use the machine and then you forgot everything you did in the class and you could take another class the next week and try again. <laughs> um, especially if you're new to embroidery. That's very helpful. Um, and then the software, um, they have classes every week and the classes are on different topics. Like she'll have a class specifically on digitizing fonts. One on different stitch types. One on creating shapes one on digitizing a logo, one on digitizing a patch. So it's, um, I think it's Julia that teaches the classes and she's super helpful. So I've been learning the Chroma software. Um, I'm just not as fluent with using it as I am in Brilliant. So I'm kind of a crutch of, well, if I'm in a hurry, I go to in Brilliance. Um, but it's a, it's a really good program and it comes free when you buy the Chroma EM1010. The Chroma digitizing software comes from free with it, so that's a really nice feature. Okay. Yes, Carol, uh, Candy's laughing at Carol about <laughs> moving on. Um, she is a teacher, and she is she keeps people in line. That's what. That's why I love her. She keeps me going. <laughs> Hi, Con. Okay. So. I see Tina's talking about stabilizer. I have heard people like take the scraps of their stabilizer and just sew in, except cut away. You could sew them together. So, um, Carly, which of the Embrilliance family can use the stitch computation? You can do that with Essentials. So the beginner program that I recommend everybody to get, um, you if you're using a BX font, type out your name in your font and then go to the stitches option um, and you can increase the compensation on it. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Any more? No more questions. I'm going to go ahead and show y'all. Let's see how good I can do a camera job at this. Let me move my computer over. So with my L desk. Right. Let's see, how does that look? Okay, so give me a second. So with the hoops for the Innovis series, the NQ series, you have this bar and it slides in, I think that's good. Okay, it slides in this little part right here. And you see this lever? We're gonna put that down once it's in there. So we're going to slide. should not be a problem at all for the bunny to just lay right here while it is stitching. So I have the name already uploaded on the machine and I'm going to rotate it. 
someone so kindly suggested. <laughs> so now I have it upside down on the machine. So you just hit the rotate button and I'm loving this color screen. Um, if y'all have seen my videos with the PE 770, this is like night and day um, from trying to see what the design looks like and picking a design when I went to my USB drive to pick the design, like it was no question on what design I wanted. Um, so, I love it. So, now that we have there, I'm going to go to end edit. And now I want to trace. So I'm gonna hit that little dashed line with the, um, the arrow on it. And now it gives me all these points or this button again. And I'm gonna use the points. I wanna see where the rightmost part of the name is gonna be, where the, the corner, this corner, all the way this way. So that's when we start getting where the bunny is getting close. So my name might be actually a little bit too big. Actually, it looks like it needs to move because this is the top. That's the middle. But my seam is here and here. Yeah, I'm going to move it. So let me go back. Okay, and I'm going to trace again. Let me see the top. Let me see the bottom. That looks better. And again, this is me just kind of looking where the needle is. I'm a little worried about the length of the name. I think. I might shrink it a little. So I'm going to go back. Let's see if I could do that. And I'm going to go to size. And I think I'm going to smush it this way. So you see the arrows pointing in on this box. I'm going to click that four times. And then I'll go back to tracing and let me um, see where my points are. I think I like that better. All right, so put my needle back in the middle, double check everything, and now we can hit OK and embroidery. And I need to put my presser foot down, and so on this machine, I don't need to do anything back here. There is a button to just press, and the presser foot goes down, so fancy. And now I have a green light, and I can store, start embroidering. And now y'all can watch that. Okay, so are there any questions right now? Thank you, Rosa and Elena. I like it too, it's super nice. Y'all hear how quiet it is? It is like significantly quieter. Um, all right, Kathy wants to know magnetic hoops for the PE 800. I think Carol, I think I have all the magnetic hoops on that paper I sent you, if you want to link those for them. Sometimes they have them on Amazon, and then sometimes they have them on Sew Machines Plus. Let's see. All right, Seven Crafty Fingers wanted to know if the NQ was the one I was looking at and I ended up getting the persona instead. Yes, this machine, or the actually the embroidery only version of this machine, because this.
this machine just got released to be set, sold online on Monday. Previously, this machine could only be purchased from uh, a Brother dealer. So Brother just allowed it to be released to be sold um, online this past Monday. So that's why this machine is a big deal right now because previously you couldn't buy this online. Um, so last year when I was looking, the Innovis NQ1600E, the embroidery only um, machine like this, was available for sale online, but it's sold out everywhere. You still can't find it. And that was the one I was originally looking for. Couldn't find it. And my dear friend Andrea, <laughs> the sales lady from Sewing Machines Plus, um, she talked me into the persona back there. And I'm very glad she did because I love that machine. So it worked out very good. Let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's see. Linda says, I want the one with the camera. They are not going to make it anymore. Uh, let's see. You mean a flatbed machine with the camera? I don't know. Brenda just got the new Stellaire. And then the next step up from the Stellaire is the Luminaire. Those are two super fancy flatbed machines. I mean, I think Brenda's new machine hoop goes up to like 9 by 14. It's ridiculous. It's bigger than my multi needle. And um, one weird thing with this machine, though, I don't know if it just did it. I'll have to catch it again. When it cut, it cuts the jump stitches, so that's great. But it moves. Every time it cuts the jump stitches, it moves way down the hoop. It just doesn't cut it and start stitching. I'll show you on the next time it does it. Um, so I don't know if Brenda's machine has a camera on it. If hers doesn't, I'm sure the Luminaire does. And then I know, like, the Brother 10 Needle machine has a camera on it. Those are the only ones I know. Yeah, but they, so Candy just said it. So the, the Luminaire has it and the Tin Needle has it by Brother. And then I'm sure Baby Lock has their version that does the same thing. Oh, Connie, I'm sorry your iPad died, but I'm glad you're back with us. Thank you guys. Okay, Bobby says the her flourish. Okay, here it goes. So you see it's done cut it's done stitching the B. It cuts the jump stitch and then it does that. I don't know why it does that. So but that's something something to keep in mind because I stitched. Oh let me show you. So this is a Disney, so I forgot, we haven't even talked about the Disney features of this machine. So this is a Disney machine, and um, it comes with like 30-something preloaded Disney designs, and I have a little book with all of them. And so to answer the question, I know a lot of people are going to have, did, Brother has a partnership with Disney, and they have official Disney um, digitized designs. All of the designs are going to be fill stitch. There will be no applique. They're all fill stitch. You can see here. Um, and they have a range of characters from Mickey and Minnie, Pooh, to the princesses, even some of the Pixar um, movies. Um, and with a Disney machine, hey baby, uh, you can have them preloaded. However, even if you have a regular... I want to see um, um, with Is that our, all That's all breeze, yeah. Oh, I like those. Yes, yeah, so we got the Frozen. Are you still recording? Yeah, I'm still recording. So we got the Frozen thread. Abigail really likes these. And then we made Elise a shirt. So this was the first thing I made when I got the machine. And oh, back up. Look, we need stuff Um, This is the first thing I made um, when I got the machine. Okay, watch out. I got to do this last step. I think it's going to be a little tricky. So it's doing the Y on the bunny now, and the head, Hello. oh, I hear it, Elise, something's wrong. Okay. So. <laughs> Why does it look like I have lipstick on? I don't know. It's the lighting. Okay. 
I'm glad I shrunk the design because you can see the Y is right there on the edge. Uh, Cynthia Gilliam said I came in late. Did she already do the bunny ear we're tutorial? We're doing it right now, Cynthia. Yep, we're doing the bunny ear right now. So yeah, if you watch the replay, you can see how we hooped it and everything. But it's super easy. So, all right, it's doing the last of the bunny stitch. Okay, I showed y'all Elise's little Minnie Mouse, and then Abby, did you want me to make you a Minnie Mouse one? Or I might, she wants, I know what she wants. She wants Tinkerbell. And I love the Tinkerbell. The Tinkerbell has 21 different colors. <laughs> So, it is, it's just, it's delayed, so watch, it's going to show, in a minute, it's going to show where I zoomed in on Tinkerbell, it just, it's a little bit, like, behind. Okay, so the ears are finished stitching, everybody says hi, look, Anton says hi. Hi, Anton. Okay. Y'all are just having your own conversation. See, look, there's where we talked about Tinkerbell. So our, our camera on the computer versus what we're talking to is about 30 seconds to a minute delayed. So she's very confused why the computer's not showing what she's doing. <laughs> okay, so the ear is finished stitching. You can see finished here. So we're going to go to OK. And we're going to lift this little lever and pull this up. So now that is the button. So let's see. And then maybe I think we're going to move everything back to the other um, side. How long have you been recording this, Mom? Oh, How yeah. many people okay, are you? watching? I don't know. Okay, so transition. Okay, so you go stand over there and talk to everybody while I'm moving stuff. <laughs> Hi. Okay, so we got our bunny. We're gonna put our bunny here, and then watch mommy's gonna come put her computer over. Okay, so watch it. Okay. 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 Watch all the. This ball. is. Yeah. Okay, back up. Watch out! I need you to move. I need you to move. Watch the cords. Okay. Hey, Mom, the tablet's showing the tablet. Look. I know. <laughs> Technology, guys. Technology. Oops. Okay. It says okay. something went wrong. Tap to retry. Okay. How are we oh, at? your little background <laughs> looks so cute. Okay, don't knock the camera over. All right. Do, 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 do. Well, I better go. I'm gonna do it. Okay, okay. Baby. all right, love you. All right, so so y'all saw the bunny ear. Now let me also show you what camera am I looking at? This one. Um, show you the shirt. It's all done, and it's so cute. Oh my goodness, I love it. I'm glad I changed the colors. Love it. Look at the shirt. Can they come out cute? Love it, love it. I also loved that we did that and we did something else. Like that is the coolest thing about a multi needle. Um, especially, I love all of the quick stitch designs that Marmaby and Joy Kate have that are adorable for kids that you can do and set it and walk away. So, I am. What is live breaking news from Carly Bell? <laughs> Candy. <laughs> okay. Um, C wants to know if the Disney book can be ordered for the Dream 2. Let's see. I don't know. Oh, so I didn't get to finish telling you because that will be okay. Okay. Brother has a partnership with Disney. There are several Disney machines. And they're going to have a D at the end of the model number. And they are going to come preloaded with a number of Disney designs. However, um, if you own any regular Brother Machine flatbed, and if you own the Persona, for some reason they do not allow it with the 6-needle and the 10-needle, but the Persona and down, 
you can get access to the I Broadery website. That's the Brother Disney website. And purchase the official. Ah, this magnet is hard. Um, away from the computer. Okay. Um, you can purchase Disney designs to then put on your brother machine. Um, I haven't done it myself, but we had a big discussion about it in the Facebook group a long time ago, and um, several people in the group were very well understanding of how the website worked. And I think you have to put in the serial number to your machine. So you can still get the Disney designs. The stipulation is the designs are for personal use only. You cannot sell shirts with those Disney embroidered designs on them. So they are for personal use only. Okay? So this is our faux smock design from uh, Barma B. And I love it. It came out so cute. So all we need to do is clean it up a little. And... Just turn the shirt inside out and rip the tear away. That comes right off. And then later on, I'm going to just pull up all this excess poly mesh and I'm going to trim that. And then I'm going to iron on some tender touch on the back. But I'll probably do that later because I want to I want to focus on showing y'all how to finish up the bunny. But that's the shirt. All done. I think we did a good job with placement and the neckline, like without doing any placement marks, because it's so nice that the Mighty Hoop is the size of the shirt, so it's super easy to hoop it without worrying about that your placement is wrong. So that was fun. Okay. Put that there. Okay, so back to the bunny. Um, I'm going to pull my pins out. And I'm going to pull my water soluble topper off. Okay. Then this is cutaway. So I'm going to pop it out the hoop. And I'm going to trim it real quick. And then if you wanted to do, like some people were saying, you can save. You could save this piece and this piece and just sew them together. And I could use them for another project on a smaller hoop. So that's the inside of the ear. So if I wanted to, before I stitch it up, I can make sure all the water soluble topper is off. I've got a few little stray strings I'm going to trim. And I'm going to use my tie pin real quick to remove the um, placement marks I did make. But they they go away with water. The purple side will go away like in a few hours if you just let it sit. And the blue side um, is water and Tide Pin. Um, but I always just use the Tide Pin because I want it to be hurry up and gone. And this is not like the heat, the friction pins, the friction pins, like the people have said, they come back when it's really cold outside. So if like I did a shirt and it's super cold outside, the marks would come back. That's not going to happen with this. This is not a friction pin. It's water soluble and air soluble. Okay, so we have our ear. It's all done. So now um, we need to stitch it up. And so we're just going to fold it with the two right sides together. 
like this. And then down here at the bottom, that's going to be where I'm going to end up hand stitching at this little hole here. But I'm going to, with my sewing machine, I'm going to stitch all here. And then once that's done, we're going to flip it right side out. We'll have a little hole here and we'll hand stitch that. And that's it. So I'm going to work on pinning that. Do y'all have any questions? Carly Donna wants to know if there are any magnet frames for the SE 1900. It isn't on the list you gave me. Um, so anything that is for the PE 800 is also for the P this SE 1900. Those machines are exactly the same, except the SE 1900 is the sewing embroidery combo machine. But for embroidery features, all the same hoops for the PE 800 are going to be the same hoops for the SE 1900. Okay, so I am pulling out some of this old bottom thread. Okay, so my stitching is here, so we can either use clips or pins, whatever. <coughs> Let's see, I always used pins last year when I did it. Let's try clips. So you can just clip it together. And, and it's easy because the old stitch line is there. You can see the holes in like the indent and the seams. You just kind of follow that along. So like, even if you're someone like me, you cannot sew. <laughs> you can do this. Okay, so, boom. And this is where I'm starting, where this clip is. I can see my, where the bobbin thread stopped right here. And that's where I'm going to start. So let's figure out how we're going to film this. Let's go. to bring y'all over to my sewing machine. Now, if I was quick, I could hook up the sewing arm to my new NQ3600, but I'm not very quick. So I have this right here already turned on, already ready to go. So this is the Brother CS6000i. This is a great basic sewing machine. It has 60 different decorative, regular buttonhole stitches, um, and it's super easy to use. If I can use it, anybody can use it. <laughs> so um, I am just going to, and I have the walking foot on it. Um, this is like a good universal everything foot. And for thick items, it works well. So, I can see that that is good. Mm. I'm just going to find my foot. So, I'm going to stitch a little. Oh, wait, I'm going wrong way. I should be starting over here. You see how good of a seamstress I am? I'm expecting the machine to stitch back. And then Carol's probably cringing right now, like Carly. Okay, here we go. This side. This is where I want to go. Going forward. Yeah, right on there. I got some good stitch. And my back stitch. My forward stitch. Right on the point. Now I'm going to turn it. Okay. So, it's not 
stitch that back to what it was before. You can see I did it kind of right on the line where it was before. Probably could have been a little bit closer to the, to the bottom there. Take these off. Okay. So that's the sewing machine. Now let's go back over here. And um, so now we've, we've sewed. Oh, I missed some straight threads. Okay. Um, we have the ear sewed with the inside out. And so now I'm just going to turn it right side. And I can take a needle and thread and just see, I made this hole a little too big. I probably could sew a little bit more and make that hole smaller. But I'm just going to go ahead and hand sew that up. So, that is your bunny. How do you like? Let me see. I am now ready to sit. <laughs> I hope y'all could hear me when I was over there by the um sewing machine. <laughs> okay. So, all right. Yay. So, any questions? Sit and sit. That's what I mean. Glad y'all like it. Yeah, so our projects for tonight. I don't think we did half bad. Two for one. Easter shirt and Easter bunny. Da -da -da. You all probably can't see the shirt. I'm glad y'all like it. I think this is cute. Um, Elise's little friend's gonna love this. So, could have did the placement a little bit lower, but I think that's good. Um, so yeah, so this is it for tonight. We got our bunnies. Y'all can make these for all of y'all kids and grandkids, and um, kids friends the shirts are super fun go check out marma b she has a lot of super cute stuff um i also just purchased her inspired she has a special for march only um it's it's a special bundle i think it's under unlimiteds on her site and it's all inspired designs and i purchased that and i can't wait to see what they look like i know it's going to be cute i'll have to show y'all in another sip and stitch Let's see. Tracy says she loves having multi machi multiple machines like I do for more than one project can be happening at the same time. Yes, I am definitely spoiled. Um, <laughs> I know uh, not a lot of people have, you know, multiple machines. So this is um, a lot of fun getting to do this. And especially when you're in crunch time like Christmas and Easter and all the birthday parties it's really nice to be able to do more than one thing at one time. And so the multi-needle definitely allows me to multitask um, pretty well so that I can set something on there and then use another machine as well. So Rosa Elena says, all the grandchildren want a bunny. Yes. Yeah, so just look for bunnies. I saw other people Walmart also has some bunnies that look like they're laying down on their stomach, but they also have long ears. So anything with long ears, you should be able to embroider. Um, and then there are something called cubbies, and they are animals that are specifically meant to be embroidered and to where they unzip and you can embroider something on the belly. Um, you can look at those. I think Allstitch sells them. 
I know someone in our group was telling us about them. I haven't tried them myself, but um, they're super cute. Um, then the next thing I need to do is Parker on the Porch is one of my favorite designers. They have an in the hoop project for a stuffed bunny and it looks adorable. And they have um, tutorials on how to do their designs on their Facebook page. And I think if you get on her new ma um, email newsletter, um, she sends out when they do live tutorials on their projects. So check that out. I'm definitely going to be making one of those. And I think, was it Embroidery Boutique? Has super cute little bunny. Um, they end up being bags, like little gift bags. It's an in the hoop project that you could like fill the bag with candy and it looks like a little bunny. And you can do it in, with Minty so, so that it looks like a little stuffed bunny when you're done. Those are fun. That's something else that's on my list to do. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, Star says they, they are so cute. She gets me every time. Every time I get an email from her, I'm like, oh, I need to buy that. I need to buy that. <laughs> I just don't have the time to make all the things that I want to make. But I have a list of all the things that I want to make. Oh, thank you, Carol, for getting the link for that. Yeah, they, they did a live in their Facebook group, and it was so cute. So cute. All right, do you store your designs anywhere else besides a USB? I store all of my embroidery designs in a cloud, whether it be Dropbox, uh, Google Drive, iCloud. I keep all of my embroidery designs on a cloud drive. And then I open them up, I save them to a flash drive when they're ready to go on the machine. But all the original files I keep in the cloud. I used to keep them on an external hard drive, but I have a fear of the external hard drive failing, so I like the cloud better. But I've heard people have it on both. So it, it definitely does not hurt to have a backup of a backup. <laughs> yeah, Monica, you made some of those bunny bags, huh? I think I saw that in the group. <laughs> Let's see. Good night, Brenda. I'm sending you another hug. So I hope y'all all enjoyed tonight's show. Let's see. Where am I at? How long have I been here? <laughs> I can't tell. <laughs> I usually can see um, my time. Let's see. Oh, an hour and 45. So yeah, we did really good. An hour and 45 minutes and two projects. And we finished, you know, a little while ago. That's pretty good. I am proud. <laughs> So, hour and five minutes. All right. That's amazing. Okay. So, I guess we'll go ahead and sign off for tonight. Um, please email me if you have any questions. My email is hello at carlybell.com. Um, especially if you're in the market for buying a machine. Um, I can help you with either if you're interested in the Recoma, if you're uh, wanting a multi-needle machine or wanting to start a small home embroidery business, this is definitely the way to go. Um, if you're interested in my pretty new 3600D, let me know. Also, um, Sewing Machines Plus has specials on the Persona and the Alliance, which are one and the same, the brother baby lock twin machines. Um, they have some really great specials on them right now. The Alliance is, at, is in stock, ready to ship. So if you wanted one, you can get one next week. The Persona is a pre-order, so you have to wait about six-ish weeks to get that in. Um, but please email me if you're interested in any of those machines. I do have uh, special discount codes, and I have perks, um, exclusive Facebook groups for the Persona and Alliance, and I'm about to start one for the Recoma for all the pe people who have purchased a Recoma through me. And for all of my Persona people, I want to do a live in our private Facebook group maybe next week and do some tutorials in there. So I will keep you posted on that. 
Um, but in the meantime, I hope y'all have a great weekend. And we will be back in two weeks for the next um, Sip and Stitch. That would be, what, Friday, March. I want to say it's 19th. Um, and I am pretty sure we're going to do a Tooth Fairy Pillow in the Hoop project. And we'll probably do it on the Persona. So I think that's going to be our next Sip and Stitch. Um, keep... Uh, checking the Sip and Stitch homepage, which is linked down in the description below um, for details on that project with all the supply list. Um, and there should be a coupon code for that Tooth Fairy um, pillow when I get it. So I will definitely pass that on to y'all so y'all can get a little discount if you're interested in making that. Um, but I hope y'all have a great weekend and uh, y'all come join the Facebook group if y'all are not already in it. And I can chat some more with y'all there. So, all right. Well, thanks so much for joining tonight. I appreciate every one of y'all. If y'all like tonight's project, please give the video a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, please click that subscribe button down below. So I will see y'all next time. Bye, guys.